Okay, hi everyone and welcome to this video. This is your captain speaking. My name is Ross and today we're going to discuss four things students really don't want to be plagiarism, but that totally are. Now, before I even get going, let me just throw up a warning by stating that the rules I'm about to tell you are not my rules. They are just the rules. And I say this because some students get upset with me when I explain this stuff and then they start arguing with me. But there's really no point in arguing with me because, again, these rules are not mine. They exist completely independently of me. Even if while you're watching this video I get hit by a bus and shuffle off this mortal coil, the rules will still be the rules will still be the rules. Okay then, now we've got that out of the way, let's crack on with things students really don't want to be plagiarism number one, which is taking a paragraph from another author, rewording some bits, and giving a citation for the original source. Now, I've started with this because it's the one students protest about most. So before you bite my head off, back it up, pack it in, and let me begin, because I'm going to show you why this is plagiarism with the help of Miami University, who tell us the following. Plagiarism includes using similar grammar and sentence structure to an original source. What this means is that you cannot just take someone else's text, throw some synonyms into it and call it your own. The minimum standard for avoiding plagiarism is that you change two things. One, the words, and two, the grammatical structure. We can illustrate this with an example from the most famous opening line in all of English literature, from A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. So the original reads, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. And the plagiarized version below reads, these were those greatest periods, these were those most terrible periods. Now even though I've changed every single word in the second version, it's still clearly plagiarism. And anyone with a basic knowledge of English literature would spot that straight away. And the reason is that the plagiarized version retains the original sentence structure. So make sure that when you paraphrase, you use not only your own words, but also your own sentence structure. All right, all right, all right. That brings us to things that students really don't want to be plagiarism number two, which is copying three or more consecutive words from another author without giving a citation. Now, this one definitely gets people angry at me because it makes them realize how much work is involved in paraphrasing. So let me just back up my statement with a quote which reads, Remember that using more than two words in a row from a source without attribution is considered plagiarism. And this comes from Yale University, which is a fairly fancy schmancy kind of an institution, so they probably know what they're talking about. So, if you take more than two words in a row from another author, it has to be attributed. Now, you'll be pleased to hear that there is an exception to this, and that relates to when you have fixed phrases that are more than two words. For example, if I were to write shallow geothermal energy, or the general theory of relativity, I wouldn't have to put either of those two into quotation marks, even though they're more than two words, because those are just the phrases for those things. They don't belong to any one author per se. Okay then. Things students really don't want to be plagiarism. Number three, copying an extract from an assignment you submitted for another course. Now, this one confuses a lot of people, but believe it or not, you can plagiarize yourself. And I'm going to illustrate this with the help of a quote from Turnitin, a company which provides most of the anti-plagiarism software for universities in the English-speaking world. So here, their, bro their blog reads, as Roig suggests self-plagiarism occurs when authors reuse their own previously written work or data in a new written product without letting the reader know that this material has appeared elsewhere. And what this means is that if a text has already been submitted for another purpose, for example for you as an assessment for another course, you can't just resubmit it or even extracts from it and pretend like it's a whole new document. If you want to reuse ideas, that's fine, but go back to those ideas or your original notes and sources and rewrite those ideas for the current task. Okay then, we're on to our final thing that students really don't want to be plagiarism, and this is really just a collection of editing mistakes. So we have forgetting citations, and remember that if you forget to cite someone, then you're implicitly claiming to the reader that the ideas you're writing down are all your own. And if those ideas aren't yours and you don't cite, then it's plagiarism. Secondly, we have forgetting quotation marks. And this is plagiarism even if you give a citation. Because if you don't use quotation marks, then you're implicitly stating, these are my own words. I made them up. So again, plagiarism. 
And finally, spelling the author's name incorrectly. Now, this one is obviously unintentional and minor plagiarism, but plagiarism nonetheless. The reason being that you're supposed to correctly credit another author when you use their work. And if you misspell their name, then you're not crediting the correct person. Okay then, that brings us to the end of this video. Now, I'm sure that some of what I've said here has made avoiding plagiarism seem difficult. And quite frankly, it can be. Even for native speakers, we often find it difficult. So if any of this has made you feel overwhelmed, you're certainly not on your own. In the next class then, we're going to look at some specific tactics for paraphrasing to avoid plagiarism. So make sure you come to that class if you want to learn those things. And hopefully that will make things sound easier and give you some peace of mind. Okay then, as ever, if there are any questions, let me know. Otherwise, cheers and I'll see you next time.